Good morning, everyone. We have the privilege of studying Parshat, the Haftorah of Parshat Bamibar, which comes from the prophet Hosea, verse chapter 2, verse 1 through 22. Um, it's uh, it's funny because there's a uh, Bat Mitzvah this weekend, and, uh, you know, you think about what are good topics to talk about. Hosea is not one of them, or at least this part of Hosea is not one of them. Uh, Hosea is a prophet from... Nevi'im from from the Treasar from the uh, smaller prophets, not the minor prophets, the smaller prophets um, that uh, make up Treasar. Uh, he is the first of four prophets who uh, are talking to the Jewish people before Assyria scatters the Jewish people. Um, Hosea, Micha, Yeshayahu. Um, uh, um, and he, uh, he, 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 we talked about this, I think, last week or two weeks ago, about whether the prophecies that we read, whether they're, um, or, or, or the metaphors of that, this was last week, right? The Yermiyahu, right? Did he actually buy the, did he actually buy the land or did he not buy the land? Um, you know what? Uh, what exactly was that in his mind? Is it like a vision that is supposed to be this like explicative uh, uh, description, or is it actually like this broad theater that's really happening in real life to convey a prophetic message? So the stakes on whether you whether your Miyahu bought the fields or not isn't really so great. The stakes on this one is much higher. Hoshea is commanded by God to marry a a harlot, a prostitute, a well known prostitute. Uh, and have children with her. Um, he has a son. Uh, uh, he is. Uh, uh, he has a son. He has uh, his two sons and a daughter. Um, he has. Uh, uh, and and this is while she's a prostitute. So he's you know not. It's not. Um, it's 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 it's. She's not faithful to him. She hasn't like become. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, uh, a good, uh, a good, a good wife. Um, so we have Yisrael uh, as one son. We have Lo Ruhama, and we have Lo Ami. He's told to name his children, and these are not names that you want to name your children. Lo Ami, God says, just like the Jewish people have turned away from following God, from doing the right thing, from their obligations vis-a-vis -vis God and each other. And therefore, they are no longer God's nation. Lo ami, not my nation. And lo ruchama, right? Not a object of rachamim, of mercy, of someone to be compassionate to, meaning that they've turned away from God and therefore God will no longer have mercy on them, have compassion for them, desire them. And Yisrael also is, uh, you know, it also means that God will, El, the El being God is a theophoric name, and God will scatter and spread out. Um, and uh, part of this prophecy is this very damning uh, metaphor, whether in, in, in Hosea's mind, in his vision, or in reality, that follows the track of the Jewish people's uh, 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 infidelity towards God. But at the end, before our Parsha, I'm sorry, before our Torah starts, Hosea is told that he wants that, to divorce this woman. But Hosea doesn't want to because he has a family. And even though she's not faithful, right, he cares about his family and the relationship he has. And that becomes even further part of the metaphor for God. That even though uh, God is so upset for the people for doing all these things, the Jewish people, God still has this connection with the Jewish people. And that's where our Parsha, our Haftorah picks up. Uh, verse 1, Bayam is Barbin Israel Kohayam, that the in, in, in the number of Israel shall be as multi as uh, large as uh, as as great as the uh, grains of sand of the sea. Asher lo yimad velo yisaper, that you can't uh, asher lo yispor, that you can't uh, measure and you can't count. And in the place of calling them, Lo Ami, you are not my nation. 
um, yeah, Amer lahem, you'll tell them, B'nai, uh, B'nai El Chai, you are the children of the living God, meaning that relationship has been repaired, right? This is the redemption part. This is the, this is, this is the, the positive part, which again, makes sense why this is chosen for October. Now, any okay. reason, is there any reason why they went from the stars in the sky to the sand metaphor? Or that's just, just, just another metaphor and that's. Well, the sand is also there. Abraham is given both the scars and the sky and the sand. For some reason, I'm only thinking about the stars. Okay. Um, we can double check that. Hold on. Where does the Brit Ben Abitarim come up in Brashit? Anyone know? It is always chapter Yudsat, Yudsat, 1818. Or that's part of it. That's the the man. Uh, that's the sorry. That's not the brief term. That's the part where um, that's the important part, which gets the brief term. That Abraham is told what makes Abraham so special. Um, let's see where it is. This. Um, you're right. Abram is only given the 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 stars one. Um, but there are other places where 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 the where we're told about the dust about the sand at least in that place we'll come back to that but this is this is this is the the measure and of course this has to do a, a great connection to our parsha and our torah right between the bamidbar which is all about counting the jewish people and counting the jewish people and the different digalim um we are again presented over here this connection between counting not really being able to count um, Moshe is able to count, but God, Kiviacho, is not able to count the Jewish people. Um, and we'll see other, as we read through the story over here, other connections to Bamidbar, the story of Bamidbar. Um, Remember, this is before the split of the northern tribes, right? We, I'm sorry, this is before the exile of the northern tribes, after the split of the northern tribes. So we have northern and southern tribes that are existing here, um, two kingdoms. So the idea of them coming together and being unified is a powerful feature of this prophecy. Um, and they will come out of the land for the marvelous is the day of Israel. And in the past we said Israel meant that they were be scattered, but you can also read it as not to scatter, but Lizroa to plant, to sow, to be, um, uh, to be, to grow, um, and that that's that's sort of the double meaning that's being presented here in all of these names. Imru lachichem ami, tell everyone to my nation, tell your brothers, my nation, ami, you are my nation, meaning remember God said lo ami, and what was the other thing God said lo ruhama. Right, you're not loving, you're not loved, you're not accepted, you're not mercied. What we have, la chotechem, and to your sisters, ruhama, that you have been, that God, God's taken away that, that you are, you have, you are been replaced for that. Rivu bimchem, rivu kihi lo ishti, banochi lo isha, but this is, um, There's this uh, uh, debate now that this that the Jewish people are the children, right? This redemption is coming up, but it's the people who turned away from God and acted inappropriately, and God will lead her away because of the uh, the the challenge. Um, and what where does this challenge lead us to? Verse five. 
I will strip her naked and leave her, lead her like the day she was born, and leave her like the day she was born, the Santiha Kamidbar, and I will make her like a desert, right? This connection to desert. Um Carrot sia, like a like a like a wilderness. Um Vet Banea Lo Arachem Ki Bene Zunimhem Kizanta Ima because they have because uh, her her because she uh was uh was an adulterous wife and she acted inappropriately. Verse eight Lachem, therefore in the Sach. I'm gonna put on her way uh, a sinit uh, sirim these uh, thorns, and raise up the walls against her, and she won't find her path. at and the, her they will pursue her. Uh, we'll just get a little, little further. Verse ten. Vhi lo yada ki anochi. Natati la hadagan vitirosh vayitzar. And she hasn't realized, meaning the people who are acting, we're not talking about actual adultery here. We're talking about adulterous relationship with God, meaning this connection between God and, and the Jewish people, and they're serving idols, Baal and various other idols. Even this language of uh, a husband and a wife, right? How do you say in Hebrew, my husband? You can say either ishi or Bali, right? Right? So that's a play. This whole metaphor is a play on this idolatry that is so, so popular at this time that they are uh, fighting against. Um, and yet, what happened? I gave you Dagan, Tirosh, I gave you the grain, the oil, the wine, or the grain, the wine, and the oil. The Kasev Herbetilach, and I gave you lots of silver, the Zahav and gold, Asulabal, and you made them into idolatries, to Abal, to, to, to idols. Bachain, Ashiv, Bilakachti, Digani, I will take it back and bring back the all of these different gifts that I gave you. And there's this there's this metaphor we keep coming back to about sort of being stripped of uh, clothing, of shelter, and exposing the nakedness, right? Pishti lechasot et ervata. I will take away the tzemer and the pishtim, the wool and the linen that you use to cover your nakedness. Well, it's important to note that throughout this process, we'll, we'll, we'll get a little further. Vata. And now um, you'll be revealed for all your shame and before all the idols that you know, aren't able, that we're referring to the idols here as the lovers, right? Verse 12, and now I will uncover your shame in light of, the, of her lovers and not one of them will save her from me, meaning it, before all the idols, there'll be all these problems and it'll be clear that the idols have no power, that they are fake. Um, um, And all this is part of this sort of exile into the desert, which is this connection also to our, 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 our Parsha, that the Jews are going to desert, the Jewish community that's representative of this, un, that's represented by this unfaithful wife going to the desert. I am going to sort of coax her the whole and I'm going to lead her through the desert and I will speak to her. I will uh, uh, speak to her tenderly, like Aliba means, like in, in a loving way. And I will give her her vineyard, that Amek Akor, Akor, and the Amek of Akor, uh, which it, it, like uh, Oker Israel is like the desolate or the the desolate, the, the amek of desolation, le petach tikva. This is where petach tikva gets its name. Um, 
for, to a Petach Tikva, to a opening of hope, to a land to plow that is full of hope. Um, and uh, all of her uh, affliction, I will put uh, like the days of her youth, and like the day she came back up from the from the desert, from Egypt. Um, what's described here is this beautiful um, sort of inversion. God leads out the people, right? Uh, Hosea is not is 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 unwilling to divorce his wife. God says, "Don't worry, you'll still be on me." One day you'll have Bnei El Chai. The Jewish people will be as numerous as the as the stars and the sky. I'm sorry, as the as sand of the earth. But realize there's a process here that's going to happen. The Jewish people are going to be exiled, and they're going to be uh, scorned, and all of the things that they think come from all of their idols and their lovers that they think is really going to be um, not them. It's really from God. God's going to take that away. And when you re reach rock bottom. And, and you're stripped away of everything. That's where we see keep seeing this naked metaphor that comes up over and over again. Then, then God will re-engage with us and bring us back and show us that we have this opportunity. And what what was a desolate uh, uh, a desolate valley will become a petach tikva. Part of this metaphor of the desert, which is clearly played out here and we keep seeing that here, is not necessarily a punishment for punishment's sake, but sort of a reaching bottom that will then be a launching point for future hope and growth. And we see that sort of in these metaphors also, right? It says that they'll that she'll be stripped naked, right? We saw that a couple of times. Like what? Well, there are different points in your life that you get stripped naked. Um, the one that we choose is, hold on, first... Verse eight, five, for example, Kiyom Hivalda, like the day you were or she was born, right? Birth, also you're you're naked, but that's a that's a a rock bottom that is only up from there, right? When a baby is the the the, the nakedness or the vulnerability of a baby at that point is really a great hope because the child has its whole life in front of them that they can develop and they can grow. Um, and when we talk about, when we see even this destruction, we're, we're, it's being described as a destruction that is, uh, you know, in positive in nature and that it'll lead to future flourishing and future growth. It's a uh, stirai destruction, amanas live note, in order to be built up. And we keep seeing that over here, this sort of restoration of youth, um, and uh, uh, you know that 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 brings back the opportunity of potential that comes uh, moving forward. Um, continuing on, seventeen. And... And God will right. Vayaba yomahu in that day. Neum Hashem tikri ishi. He'll call me ishi, meaning my husband. And you won't call me more Bali. Right. So first of all, obviously, this is a play on what we saw before. Um, but also, you know, that she, you said you're not my wife, you're not my husband because of your your uh your your actions. But also, what's the difference between Ishi and Bali? Besides for that, it's also a play on the idolatry, right? And what we're describing here is not just that the people will be subservient to God, but instead of like when you serve an idol that you basically feed the idol and then you think you'll get something back, right? That's a transactional relationship. What the prophet's highlighting is not just the challenge of idolatry that exists within the people, but the challenge that the people sometimes see God as just another idol. If I do, even if you're totally monotheistic, Right. If you think that if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm going to get X, Y, and Z, that that's the way it works. That God's some sort of divine ATM. That if you do X, Y, and Z, this will definitely happen. Right. So you're making God no better than the way you serve idols. You're just casting God into the same way that you serve idols. 
And that's part of what we see over here also that the prophet is uh, highlighting. On that day, no, Mashem Tikri Ishi, you'll call me Ishi, which is a synonym for Bali, my husband. Below Tikri Li Od Bali, but you won't call me my husband. Not just my husband, but either my master or my idol or my Baal, right? All of that are synonymous with this pivot, not just in serving God, but serving God in the right way. And I'll take away the names of the Baal from her mouth, right? Those are clearly a reference to idols. And they won't listen to them anymore. Basically, there'll be this world lasting peace that will exist. The Aristili Le Olam, the Aris the Iristi Li Betzedek Ubi Mishma the Chasabrahamim. Verisili be emuna viedata dashem. So we have these three. I will um I will uh the translation I'm looking at says espouse, but that's clearly not what the words mean. The words mean like to betroth or to engage or to be uh, committed forever with mercy, with justice, with goodness. Um, and with righteousness, with faithfulness, and a knowledge of God. And it doesn't really mean like, you know, you know that three plus three is four. It's not how many theorems of God you know here. It's about a relationship with God, devotion to God, a connection to God. Um, many, Some of the commentators point out that the three eristiks here represent three different geulot that we have. I'm sorry. Yeah, three different galut and gulot that we have, different uh, 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 exiles and then returns. I believe it's the Radak even tries to highlight that is the exile from into Egypt, and that's where we become the Jewish people forever. So the Olam is this, we create this eternal covenant coming out of Egypt. Those are what was missing after the first exile that we come back with and we fix those pieces. It's the faithfulness and the divine connection that we bring back from the second and final uh, exile when we're redeemed. And it's the confluence of all those facets that build this relationship with God. Let's, that's not Torah. And that's not Torah for Bar Midbar. But there's another, I just want to add another element to this relationship to Bamidbar. We talked about it, it talks about the desert, it talks about going into the desert, forming the Jewish people, the counts, Vayam, Misbar, Bnei Israel, the counts, which we see over and over again, that's in Bamidbar. But there's one other thing. Bamidbar is always the partial we read before Shavuot. It's a rule. Never read Bamidbar after Shavuot. Right? So this isn't just the Haftorah. That is a Haftorah for Bar Midbar, but it's always the Haftorah that we read before Shavuot. It's the one we always immediately read before Shavuot. So there are connections here, not just to that, but also to Shavuot. So for example, where do we give the Torah? In the desert, right? Bar Midbar. A lot of this is talking about the people going into the desert. There's a reference to Kabbalah Tatorah here. This... Uh, this uh, greet that we have, this covenant that we have. We'll, we'll read some more of these. Um, excuse me. Um, this idea of erastichli be'emuna w'dat Hashem is this recognition of how we receive, how we, um, how we uh, are supposed to, what we're supposed to uh, get from from Torah, not just the mitzvot, but the connection to God. Um, this, the, we, so we see this sort of uh, piece as well that highlights um, this connection to Matan Torah, um, this, this uh, that, um, just trying to find the verse, hold on a second. The, oh, I'm sorry. Verse 20. The Karati Lahem breathes by Yomahu, this covenant that's being forged that's with the whole world. Um, 
again, is this 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 echo of Matan Torah and the uh, the 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 experience of Har Sinai and receiving the Torah at Sinai, the covenant that God forged with us, all of that are echoes of this theme, um, as we see presented over here as well. Um, any questions before I take us to one final point? No. So the Torah ends at verse 22. We get uh, there. There's still the rest of the of of the Haftorah, and we we see part of these. Um, but yo, I'm just going to read you them because it 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 ends on such a beautiful note, which really highlights and freeze frames what we're supposed to think about when it comes to Matan Torah. But the conclusion of this is uh, very powerful. And it will be on that day that God will call out to the heavens and to the earth, and they will respond. The Aretz. And the and the everything will start growing again. Everything that we talked about was going to be um, desolate will grow. The Him Yanu and Yisrael, and they will respond to Yisrael. Remember that that uh, that the child that was supposed to be um, God will scatter is now Va'aretz Ta'ane at Dagan Ve'Tatirosh Ve'Tiyitzar. The, the lamb will respond with new grain and wine and oil, all the delicacies that the ground has to give. And they will respond, God has sown, meaning that God will provide uh, for the people. God has planted the people. And then verse 25, which is the last of the chapter, nine in our Torah, was Ratzem Li Baaret, and you'll be sown back in the land. S O W. The Riham T at Lo Ruhama, and God will find favor back in those that had been previously called not favorable, Lo Ruhama, the Amarti, Lo Ami, and God will say to those who were once called Lo Ami, not my nation, Ami Ata, you are my nation, the Hu Yomar Elohai. And the people will respond to God, you are my God. Um, and that's the resolution of this, of this half Torah. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, of this chapter, we don't get that far. Partly, I think it's cut off a little early to end on this note of our relationship with God, which sets the throne, sets the stage for Matan Torah, for what we're, what we need to do for Shavuot. Um, but, uh, but, but it, it fills out the story next. So let's just let's just recap um, what we saw. We saw a uh, check. See you later. We uh, saw uh, a number of connections between this parsha and Bamidbar, both the desert imagery, the coming out a new nation and a young nation, all of which is part of that, as well as the counts that is so part of Bamidbar. According to our rabbis, Bamidbar isn't called the book of Bamidbar, but Sefer HaPikudim, the book of countings of censuses, because that is one of the primary themes that we have in Bamidbar. Number two, we see the connection to Shavuot, both that the Torah is given in the desert, the prominent role that plays, but also all of this stripping down and rebuilding and this renewal that comes in place with uh, receiving the Torah, the Brit that comes with receiving the Torah of the Covenant, and as well, this Veres Tichli, Be'emunah, V'dat Hashem, V'tzedek, V'rachamim, all of those different traits that are part and parcel of our experience with God and the Almighty. Um, and then we also uh, saw the, the, even the metaphors that are, and the, and the descriptions that are somewhat jarring in terms of the challenging positions that people are in, really highlight this petach tikva, this opening for hope, that, uh, that uh, things might, that, that things are really resetting, that this, Stripping down to the day that you're born is really a reset that enables you to continue to grow and to be a launching point from there, as opposed to, you know, God forbid someone being stripped like the day they die. Um, and those images help Stuart, the prophet, to provide this nivuah uh, that is both cascading the people for their lack of, you know, appropriateness with their relationship with God and also provides opportunities for hope which is part and parcel of the story of Hosea and the Haftorah we see. Um, yeah, so we'll stop here.
Um, as I noted, this is going to be the last one until September because we'll have to pick back up when I get back from Israel. Um, but uh, I wish everyone a wonderful summer and look forward to getting back into the swing of things come September. Have a, have a good trip to Israel. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to everyone soon. Thank it's you. interesting that it ends.